I've always wanted to compete against other hackers on live targets, but finding the time was always a challenge. Between my demanding full-time job, taking care of my family and sharing my knowledge on YouTube, I barely had time to sleep. But today was different. I had some unexpected free time and I was determined to make the most of it, participating in King of the Hill a live hacking challenge where participants compete to gain root and collect flags in just 60 minutes. The winner would be the one with the highest score and I was ready to give it my all. As I logged in into the platform, I saw that there was a game about to finish, but I wasn't going to let that discourage me. I quickly created my own game and to my surprise, three players joined right away. The game was on. With just 15 minutes left to start the game, I knew I had to be fully prepared. I made sure to update my etc host file to include the name of the server. Who would waste time remembering or typing the full IP address every time? As I looked at the other players in the game, I realized that they were all above my skill level. They had solved more rooms and had certainly higher levels than me, but I didn't let that intimidate me. I kept calm, but my nerves were on the edge. Nevertheless, I trusted my skills and mentally prepared myself for the challenge ahead. With just three minutes left, the adrenaline rush was at its peak the name of the box was finally revealed and I quickly created a folder on my attacking machine. The countdown began, three, two, one, and the IP address of the target showed up. It was go time. I swiftly added the IP address to my etc host file and launched Nmap, a powerful tool for port scanning and network exploration. But wait, I realized that I had made a mistake in my bash alias file. I quickly corrected my nmap command and continued with my port scanning. The clock was ticking and every second counted. I was determined not to waste any additional time trying to optimize my workflow and focused on the task at hand. As I scanned through the port numbers, I came across many that I didn't recognize. Some of them even responded with binary data when using netcat. But one of the ports had web server that returned custom message, blame Dan. It sounded like a username to me and I quickly stored it in a file for future reference. Despite my best efforts, manual web testing didn't reveal anything significant. So I decided to use WFuzz, a tool for brute forcing directories to see if I could uncover any hidden paths on the web server. As I furiously typed on my keyboard, I couldn't help but make some typos due to the heightened state of excitement. But there was something strange. I kept getting redirected, even though I was sure I had entered the correct command. Hmm. I decided to use curl to send requests and check the responses. And to my surprise, I was getting 404 errors. Was it possible that I needed to send a legitimate user agent to bypass some sort of protection? I tried different user agents, but I still got redirected. Hmm. The clock was ticking and I had to move on. In my quest to learn more about the services running on the target machine without wasting precious time on manual work, I decided to rerun Nmap with service enumeration to get some banners. One of the banners revealed an InfluxDB API running and I quickly searched for default credentials online and found a hit. I tested them using curl. Unfortunately, they didn't work. I hadn't seen any flags sent by anyone else yet, so it seems like the others were struggling like me. One of the services returned an image, so I wondered if I could extract anything useful from it. I used exif tool to extract its metadata, but nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I also checked the strings in the image, but found nothing. Just as I was about to show the image in my explorer, my PC bugged and I couldn't even load the image content. What a terrible timing. I was left with Telnet service. If I guessed the right credentials, I would gain initial access to the box. But I know I'm terrible at guessing and you probably know that from my previous videos. But wait, I found a line that looked like a pair of credentials. Hmm, they seemed familiar, like they were encrypted or encoded with a cipher. And my hunch told me that it was Caesar cipher. I quickly visited an online Caesar cipher tool and tried different offsets. My hunch was right. I finally found legitimate English strings in the credentials and I used them to authenticate. I landed on a shell, but I couldn't run commands. 
I type help, hoping to get some info, and it worked. I got a list of commands that I could use, such as pwd for the current directory, but I wanted more. I wanted to run arbitrary commands. I took a deep breath and tried to calm down. I looked closer and saw a command conveniently named command. When used with the correct options, I could leverage it to finally run shell commands. It was time to hunt for some flags. The first flag was right in the home directory. So I grabbed it. On the ranking dashboard, no one has sent any flags so far. So it seemed like I was the first one. I wondered if there were any other flags readable by the current user. I used find command to verify and I found two more. It was raining flags, baby. Now it was time to escalate to another user and get more flags. I'm very new to this type of challenge. I wasn't sure if I needed to target another user or directly go for root. But before I did that, I wanted to get a more comfortable shell and not have to use the telnet command every time. These small things could make a huge difference in productivity. So I quickly uploaded my SSH public key and connected through SSH. But I still had the same restrictions. I investigated the bash RC and profile files, but found no call so I continued with my current shell. Meanwhile, someone else found a flag worth 15 points and was getting close to the top of the list and I needed to progress quickly. I started looking into other users' home folders. One of them caught my attention as it hosted one of the exposed web services. I inspected it and found that it had a remote code execution feature. I said feature, it wasn't a vulnerability. I tried interacting with it and run commands, but I failed. I wasn't sure if it was because I was stressed or if I didn't read the code well. Either way, I continued my enumeration. I suspected that this was how the other hacker got access. I continued my enumeration, listing files, directories, kernel version, but found nothing interesting. That is, until I listed the SUID executables when I stumbled upon a strangely named file called vim.basic. I've never seen that before. My mind raced with possibilities. Could this be my ticket to get root access? I had to find out. With bated breath, I executed the command to run shell from vim, but to my dismay, my new shell didn't grant me root access. I was baffled. What was I doing wrong? Frustrated, I went down some rabbit holes and red herrings. The challenge was designed to test my skills and it kept me on my toes. Meanwhile, I saw on the scoreboard that the same player had already sent the fourth flag and claimed the top spot. I was now in second place with only three flags. Determined not to give up, I went back to the Vim attack vector, determined to make it work this time. I had a brilliant idea. I would try running bash with the dash p option to avoid dropping the root privilege. If it worked, I could get on track and possibly even reclaim the first place. With a surge of adrenaline, I hit enter, expecting my plan to unfold perfectly. But just then, the server went down and I realized that time was up. I quickly checked the dashboard only to see that I had missed my chance to get first. I was disappointed, but I knew I had given it my all. It was only later that I realized I could have simply edited the passwd file to change the root password and escalate my privileges. I couldn't believe I had missed such simple yet effective approach. I had plenty of time to become the king of the challenge and send all the flags.